This problem is from the 2007 International Mathematical Olympiad, where it was presented as problem number five. The statement is as follows. Let A and B be positive integers. We must show that if the quantity 4 times A times B minus 1 divides the square of 4 times A squared minus 1, then A must be equal to B. Problems at this level are designed to be challenging. A direct approach is unlikely to succeed. The solution requires uncovering a hidden algebraic structure, a common theme in advanced number theory. A direct algebraic assault on this problem is inefficient. A more strategic approach is to transform the divisibility condition into a more symmetric and manageable form. We will use insights from modular arithmetic to achieve this. This is our starting point. The vertical bar denotes divisibility. First, an important observation. The greatest common divisor of our two terms, 4 times a times b minus 1 and b, is 1. We can see this because 4 times a times b minus 1 is congruent to negative 1 modulo eb. This confirms they are coprime and prepares us for the modular reasoning to follow. Now for our key strategic move. We will multiply the right side of our divisibility relation by b squared. Why this specific multiplication? It is designed to create a 4 times a squared times b term inside the parenthesis, which we can then simplify using a congruence. This is a deliberate setup. We begin by moving b squared inside the parentheses. Distributing b achieves our goal. The term b is now introduced into the expression being divided. This allows us to leverage modular arithmetic. Let us now work modulo 4 times a times b minus 1. By definition, 4 times a times b is congruent to we in modulo 4 times a times b minus 1. This is the fundamental relation we will use. From this key relationship, we can deduce the congruence for 4 times a squared times b, multiplying both sides by a, yields a significant simplification. We can now substitute this result. Returning to our divisibility statement, the term 4 times a squared times b can be replaced by a under our current modulus. The substitution reveals a structural elegance. The complex expression reduces to a minus b. This transformation is crucial. To connect it back to our divisibility condition, which involves a square, we must now square both sides of this congruence. Squaring both sides preserves the congruence relation. We now have two pieces of information. First, this congruence we have just derived. Second, our modified divisibility condition implies that this same expression is congruent to zero. We can now combine these two facts through transitivity. Therefore, it must be that zero is congruent to the square of a minus b. This is the breakthrough. We have reduced the complex initial condition to this simplified symmetric form. The problem is now reduced to analyzing this new relationship. Before proceeding with the formal proof, it is instructive to verify our transformation with a concrete example. Let us consider the case where a equals b equals 2. Our original condition becomes, does 4 times 2 times 2 minus 1 divide the square of 4 times 4 minus 1? The expressions evaluate to 15 and 225. Since 225 equals 15 squared, the divisibility holds. Our simplified condition asserts that 15 must divide the square of 2 minus 2, which is 0. As any non-zero integer divides 0, this is also true. The transformation is consistent. Having confirmed our transformation, we now analyze its implications. By definition of divisibility, there must exist an integer m such that this equation holds. Observe the signs of these terms. The left side is a square, so it is non-negative. The term 4 times a times b minus 1 is positive as a and b are positive integers. Consequently, m must be a non-negative integer. This leaves two possibilities to investigate, the case where m equals 0, and the case where m is strictly positive. First, we consider the case where m equals 0. 
If m is 0, then the square of a minus b must be 0. The only real number whose square is 0 is 0 itself. Thus, we can take the square root of both sides. This implies that a minus b is equal to 0. To isolate a, we add b to both sides of the equation. This leads directly to the conclusion that a equals b. To complete the proof, we must show this is the only possibility by demonstrating that m cannot be positive. We will now prove by contradiction that m cannot be a positive integer. The technique we will employ is known as the method of infinite descent, famously used by Pierre de Fermat. It works by assuming a positive integer solution exists and using it to construct a strictly smaller positive integer solution. This process would generate an impossible, infinite chain of decreasing positive integers. We begin with our equation, under the assumption that m is a positive integer. First, we expand the squared term to rearrange the equation. Expanding the square is the first step toward restructuring this as a quadratic equation. Our strategy is to treat this as a quadratic equation in the variable b. We group terms to facilitate this structure. Factoring the right side will complete the rearrangement. Factoring out a times b yields this form. Now, we write this in the standard form for a quadratic equation in b. This is the standard quadratic form with variable b and coefficients that are functions of a and m. To analyze its roots generically, we will represent the variable with x. We know by construction that b is one integer solution to this equation. This method, often called Vieta jumping, investigates the properties of the other solution. Vieta's formulas provide a direct relationship between the coefficients of a polynomial and the sums and products of its roots. Let us denote the two roots of this quadratic as b and b prime. The sum of the roots is equal to the negative of the coefficient of the x term. Observe this sum. a and m are integers, so the right side is an integer. b is also an integer. If an integer plus b prime equals an integer, then b prime itself must be an integer. This is a crucial detail. The product of the roots is the constant term. Since a is a positive integer and we assumed m is a positive integer, the product a squared plus m is positive. As b is positive, b prime must also be a positive integer. To analyze the magnitude of this new root, b prime, we can rearrange the product formula. Dividing by b provides an explicit formula for b prime. We will now show that this new solution is strictly smaller than the original solution, which will form the basis of our contradiction. Because the underlying equation for m is symmetric with respect to a and b, we can assume b is the larger of the two integers without loss of generality. Substituting our formula for b prime into this assumption yields this inequality. To simplify, we clear the fraction by multiplying both sides by b. This gives us a squared plus m is greater than or equal to a times b. Next, we will substitute our original expression for m. To do so, we first isolate m. Subtracting a squared from both sides isolates m. Factoring the right side will be useful for a later cancellation. Factoring out a gives a times the quantity b minus a. The substitution yields this expression. Since we assumed m is positive, b cannot equal a. With our b greater than or equal to a convention, b must be strictly greater than a. Therefore, b minus a is a positive integer, and we can safely divide both sides by it. This simplifies the inequality significantly. Now, we multiply by 4 times a times b minus 1. Since a and b are positive integers, this term is positive, so the inequality is preserved. This leaves b minus a greater than or equal to a times the quantity 4 times a times b minus 1. Distributing the a on the right-hand side will allow for cancellation. The distribution gives b minus a is greater than or equal to 4 times a squared times b minus a. Adding a to both sides cancels the term. The inequality simplifies to b is greater than or equal to 4 times a squared times b. 
Since b is a positive integer, we can divide both sides by b. We arrive at the inequality. 1 is greater than or equal to 4 times a squared. This statement is a contradiction. Since a is a positive integer, its minimum value is 1. Thus, 4 times a squared is at least 4. The inequality claims that 1 is greater than or equal to a number that is at least 4, which is false. Our initial assumption that b prime is greater than or equal to a has led to a logical contradiction. Therefore, the opposite must be true. The new solution, b prime, must be a positive integer strictly smaller than a. So, by assuming a solution, a, b, exists where a is not equal to b, we have constructed a new integer solution, a, b prime, with a strictly smaller positive component. Because b prime is the other root of the same quadratic, this new pair also satisfies the core equation. This process can be repeated. This implies the existence of an infinite, strictly decreasing sequence of positive integers. Such a sequence cannot exist. The well-ordering principle states that any non-empty set of positive integers must have a least element. An infinite descending chain has no least element, which is a contradiction. Therefore, our initial assumption that m is positive must be false. The logical chain is now complete. The assumption that m is positive leads to a contradiction. The method of infinite descent has proven that m cannot be a positive integer. Since we established that m is a non-negative integer, the only remaining possibility is that m must be zero. Substituting m equals zero back into our key equation. The right side becomes zero. As before, if the square of a number is zero, the number itself must be zero. We take the square root of both sides. This simplifies to a minus b equals zero. Finally, we add b to both sides to solve for a. This forces the conclusion that a must equal b. We can verify this result. If a equals b, the original condition becomes does four times a squared minus one divide the square of four times a squared minus one? This is trivially true, as any integer divides its own square. The initial condition appeared arbitrary, but it concealed a rigid algebraic structure. By transforming the condition, we uncovered a symmetry that allowed for the application of Vieta's formulas. The assumption of a non-equal solution led to a contradiction through infinite descent. This demonstrates a core principle of number theory. Divisibility imposes strong constraints, and exploring those constraints can lead to definitive and often elegant conclusions. If you found this solution and the method of infinite descent interesting, please consider subscribing for more problems from Olympiads and beyond. Thanks for watching.